Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationeers. Now today we're back at our programming station here and today we're going to have a look at relative branching and relative jumps. So what are relative branching and relative jumps? Well if we take a look at our wiki and just search for MIPS. There we go. Down the bottom in the list of our branching commands we find our relative jumps. That's these ones here. Now the codes are the same as our regular branching. It's just that instead of just B, they are BR. Now these ones are frequently a cause of the bugs in my program because when I want to branch, I think branch starts with BR. So I start my command with BR where BR is branch relative, not branch. Completely different command. Easy mistake to make. That one little R will give you lots and lots of troubles if you're not careful with it. So what is a relative jumping? Well, we find that our normal branch commands are absolute jumps. So they are referring to a line number along here. So if we put in a command to, to just jump to line two, that's all it is. Jump to line two. It will, when it gets to here, it sees that, it says, right, we've got to jump up to line two. Whether it's a conditional branch or an absolute jump, that's fine. A lot of the same thing. And it will always be there. It is from the top of the code. Now, if we change that to JR, jump relative, it now jumps relative for here. So where line zero is the top of the code, an absolute reference, line zero now becomes where this code is here. So it'll jump two lines, one, two, it'll jump down to here. So this is our new destination for that code. So you'll find that is the main difference where it is. A relative jump is zero, line zero is the current line code. So if you did a relative jump to zero, it would just permanently get stuck on this line. Don't do that, that just won't work. What are the advantages of relative jumps? Well, the first one up, if we look at our, our absolute jumps, so our first jump jumps to line four. So if a code reads down, it'll get to here, it finds the command, jump to line four. Now there's an absolute jump, it will always jump to line four. That works beautifully. Until you come back to edit your code, and you put in a couple of more lines up here, and your code south says jump to line four it is going to the wrong spot now that may not work at all if it does work there may be glitches in it and you'll be wondering why because you have to then come back and sort of say okay i've edited something up here but now i have to come down here and remember to correct that to say that that's now a seven that's a bit of a hassle uh, i mean we have said before if we say um we create a tag for it, we call it important, and call it a tag. So now I can just copy that and have our absolute jump jump to the tag. So now, if I put in more lines of code, the tag moves as well, and it's automatically changed it for you. Now, that works for you, not a problem. But if you are running shorter code, lines of code or if you just want a shorthand way of doing it. I mean we, we are limited to 128 lines of code so if you are really writing a packed out script there which does use them all you may be running out of lines of code so we can use a relative jump so from here it'll be a relative jump we want to jump relative minus one minus two minus three minus four minus five so if we change that to a minus five, we no longer need that line in there. And we have minus five, so it gets down to here and it says go back, like the old game of snakes and ladders. So we jump back five lines there, so zero being the current one, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. And that's our relative jump from there. You can jump forward, you can jump back. It makes no difference, it doesn't care. And the advantage now is if I do add more lines of code in there, that relative jump still works. However, if we do add more lines of code in here, now that relative jump doesn't work. Uh, you have to come back and change it. So 
it sort of fixes you. It doesn't kind of fix you there. Whereas the tags would have worked nicely on either cases there. So yeah, you, you, you can do it. It'll save you a bit of coding, but you know, it's it, it has its risks. I mean, when your car runs out of petrol, I mean, it's easier just to go steal another one rather than fill it up with petrol. But sooner or later, someone's going to come up and stab you for being such a prick. And um, it's the same sort of thing here. There's, this is a short and easy way of doing it, but it can come back and bite you. So uh, just be careful of them there. So having said that, it's 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 all a bit of a um, bit of a risk there. Let's write up some code and see how the thing actually works. Okay, so here we go. What we've got here is a basic loop. So set up a button and a light device D0 and D1. So part of our main loop of our program here, inside that we've got another loop. That loop, all that is doing is loading the setting from the button to see if it's been pressed or not. Just waits a little bit. Now if that setting is zero, the button hasn't been pressed, just go back to the loop. So it'll follow that loop there until it has been pressed. So once, once it is not equal to zero, go down here, just flash the light on and off, and back to the start, and you're back into the waiting loop again. So that is just done using a regular branch command, which is looping back up to a tag. We confirm that one. We're good to go. Export. Push the button, and we get a flash of the light. One flash of the light, and it's waiting for the button to be pushed again. Again, one flash of the light. That's all it does. Now, that one is done using a regular branch command. So if I want to use a relative branch command, say I don't have a spare line there, I don't want to define another tag for that. That makes my code look messy. I don't like that. I will use a branch relative and I want to go back minus one, minus two, so minus two. So the same one, branch equal to zero, that's now branch relative equal to zero. So exactly the same thing. If our zero is equal to zero, stop, step back two lines there, and we're just backing it into loading the button again. So confirm, export, we're all good. Push the buttons single flash of the light. Once again, exactly the same operation there. We've just saved ourselves a bit of setting up a tag. So everything's just a bit neater. Here we have our setup. We've got a dial with five lights on it. So here's our code. I've aliased the dial in at D0. Uh, the lights are all just on the other pins there, D1 through D5. They're all lights, so I haven't bothered to not label them, just being lazy. So our program, our main code, we start here, we load in from the dial the setting, so whatever it's set at. We multiply it by 4, we add 1, and now we do a relative jump. And each one of them will just switch on either light, zero, light, light 1 and return to start, or light 2 and return to start, light 3 return to start, 4 and 5 and so on. So all it'll do is flush a light and then return to the start. Now, the setting we're getting from the from the dial is either 1 through 5 or 0 through 4 really. Now each of our statements here is four lines long. So we don't want a number 1, 2, 3, 4. We want it to be a multiple of 4 because we've got to skip four lines each time. So we're multiplying it by 4. And we don't want a 0 case to be actually staying on zero so we've got to add one to it so now if it's zero I'll multiply by four then add one it'll be a case one so we jump one which will just take us to the next line and flash on line one dial one dial is set to say three we multiply it by four which gets us 12 add one which is 13 which is a relative jump down to light where are we down to here, down to 20. So 13 jump from 7, down to 20, we'll switch on light 4, then back to the start, and so on for each one there. So, if I confirm that, export it, we are flashing light 5 because we are set to 4, well, 
at 0 to 4, so it's flashing the last light. If I change that one there back to 0, flashing the first light. Which is the 1, it's now flashing the next light. So just by flicking the dial, you can do it that way. Of course, this is just an example. I mean, if you just want to flash on lights on and off, there are more compact ways of doing it than trying to do this with a case statement. Um, if you really want to hurt your brain, check this one out. So here we have the same bit of code. There is no jumping in this at all. It is just a straight through code. So we load the dial setting into R0. We add one because we don't want a, a zero command on it. We just want numbers one through five. And this will give us a zero, zero through four setting. So we add one word, one through five. And what we're going to do here is use an indirect address here. So our device and the device number will be specified by what is in R0. So if R0 is one, it'll go to device one. If R0 is two, it'll go to device two. So that is indirect addressing. So if I confirm that, export it, switch it on again, and once again we have the flashing lights. Change it to two, back to zero again, and there we go. So we are doing the same thing for much less code, but that's probably more than what we want really now. That's, that's something for advanced programming. Now one use where I have found the the relative jump to be very handy is actually just selecting a number of different items. Like there's just prefab hashes for different items here. This is a little script that will actually just based on the dial setting will allow you to select a prefab hash from a different set of uh, ores. Um, so what we've done is loaded the setting from the dial, added one because we don't want a zero value and then done a jump relative and it's picked out either one of them there just using the select command. Now the select command is a bit of an interesting one. Now it will select between two different values. This is confusing as hell now because I've got our defined prefab variable in there three times. But if we look at our functions there and scroll down to select eventually down the bottom here somewhere uh, you are select. So select requires your four arguments. Where you're going to store it, which is we're going to store it into prefab. The deciding value, the true or false one, which is going to be, once again, our prefab variable. And then it has to choose between two numbers based on what that prefab, what that variable is. So if it's set to zero, it'll take C. If it's non-zero, a true, it'll take B. So first thing I've done is set it to zero and then it will jump to each, whichever one is selected. So it comes down to here, it'll look at it, save into prefab, whether, what, whether, what, based on what prefab is. So prefab zero, take that hash number there and assign it back to prefab. Comes down to the next line, prefab is now true, it's non-zero, so it says keep the same value in there and keep the same value, keep the same value all the way to the end. Back to the start, and it'll do that. So from there, and it is just saving it to the to the IC housing. Right. If we confirm, export that one, we can see our state is set there to uh, 17548. That's a prefab hash for whatever whatever we've got set there, zero, one, two, you see it's changing each time there. Now you can hook a hash reader up to that one and it's sort of saying that's gold. If I change it to one, that's copper. Change it back to zero, that's iron. So that is relative jumps and relative branches. They say they have their uses just be careful with them because as I say they have been my greatest source of bugs in programs but you know each to their own I try and avoid them as much as I can because I know that they're a headache for me but they do have their uses uh, but 
you know, use it however you like. That's part of life. So, until next time, happy building. See ya.